Hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome to another uh, exciting workshop uh, hosted by Lead Angel. And today we'll be collaborating with Occupy. Basically, it's an edtech startup, um, and we have the founder, Mr. Ramit Agarwal, over here. And we'll be discussing the uh, the persistent model and overall edtech sector and how like how is it like adding value to the entire ecosystem. And before we would begin, uh, first of all, a very warm welcome and thank you very much for attending the workshop. I'll just guide you through like what all we'll be doing today. So initially, we'll be like going ahead uh, just to understand a bit about angel investments, to understand what lead angels is all about and what we are currently doing. How are we disrupting the system? And what all startups have we invested in? A bit about our portfolio. And then if you have, if you have any questions, so we'll be happy to answer those. Get it clarified. And the next session would be with uh, Mr. Manish Jhari, who is the senior vice president at Lead Angels, along with uh, Mr. Ramit Agarwal, the founder and CEO at Occupy. So yeah, uh, as you all know, uh, like startup ecosystem in India is like uh, really booming. And uh, after the pandemic, now the pandemic has really like acted as a catalyst that changed the entire ecosystem. And everything is now happening for good, right? So we could see new and new startups coming in and. Um, they are getting funded. Their ideas are getting validated, and they are they are trying to make a difference and an impact in the society overall. So, wh who are we? What is Lead Angels Network, and how does it operate? Correct. So, before before begin, uh, our entire value chain is starts with the the essence of startups. Now, if you would understand what is a startup, so startup is basically a temporary organization. Which is constantly in search of repeatable, scalable, and a sustainable business model. And uh, I would say startup is more like a sapling in a person's hand. Yeah, and the investors then believe in that idea and they pump in money, they pump in funds so that the idea could grow, it could scale, and it could attain like a next round of funding, and eventually it could attain an IPO. So from idea to IPO is what we are currently doing at Lead Angels. And uh, the whole idea eventually is then for the startups to become a global dominating uh, ecosystem, right? So we would see a few examples over here. So there's Amazon, there's Google, there's Twitter, Uber, Facebook, Airbnb. They all started at a very like a smaller scale, but then slowly and steadily, just like a redwood giant, they all grew and they grew like a like a huge tall structure, which is now uh, I would say. Uh, unmovable and uh, so that was the global scenario which we are talking about what about the indian scenario and uh, what are the factors that are actually contributing to the um, to the startup boom that we are currently witnessing so basically one time the first primary factor for india is that its population 140 crores of population that we have and uh, i would say a geography and a population is are like catalyst that uh, would like uh, create a uh, problem solving solution and uh, india is always a work in progress economy so there are a lot of opportunities and changes especially when the economy is changing the social and cultural changes are also seen uh, there are a lot of like uh, women empowerment women uh, led startups which are coming into ecosystem and which are happily accepted so that is one positive thing that we are like currently witnessing and apart from that there is never a shortage of demand Imagine for such a huge population, there's like a lot of problems and there is, there's an opportunity always to like solve those problems. And apart from that, education, transportation, housing, financial services, food and beverage would always be in demand in India. And we would have white spaces, basically that would have a possibility uh, so that there could be like a lot many winners. It, it could never be a monopoly among startups. So the, the environment wherein like a lot of startups are winning at a particular time is always uh, uh, possible in India. So this is the current uh, count of a unicorn. A unicorn is basically a startup which is like more than one billion valuation, one billion dollar of valuation. And uh, right in year 2020, India just had 11 uh, startups uh, which which became unicorn. But then in 2021, we already have 15 unicorns till date. The recent one was uh, Browser Stack. And uh, so Growfers is also in talks to become a unicorn. We'll be seeing that in the coming stages. Um, but total, we have 152 unicorns, which will soon be more than 150 by 2050. 
so that that is a really positive sign and apart from that i would like to share a few data which the government of india released yesterday 50000 recognized startups were established in 623 districts in india last 10000 startups were added in 180 days and 18 lakh formal jobs were created in the year 2021 by startup alone so that's that's a really like a positive sign and a good set of numbers that we are seeing currently and uh, overall now let let's come to angel investment so what is angel investment so basically uh, we trust as an investor we trust in on a founder and basically we fund that idea and that is angel investment and uh, why is it so important what are the benefits so one is potential for hyper returns although it's a high risk high reward ecosystem the estimated returns is always uh, better that is we have an irr of 20 to 30% uh, among the startup uh, network investments and uh, there's always learning about new tech and technology and applications uh, to various businesses so angel investment also like provides guidance to startups in form of like improving financial and social returns so i we would and we understand uh, angel investors as one who are expertise in their field they have a certain dominance and then they come to the ecosystem they help startups to like uh, work in that sector and give them certain sense of guidance and idea and uh, again in the end supporting entrepreneurs who are making a difference eventually like creating an impact in the society and what are the challenges for angel investors one is like where does like where, where do they find quality startups uh, across india how could they evaluate them what are the parameters that they need to look at whenever they see a certain startup what are the due diligence and documentation and filing to ensure compliance post investment monitoring and support who will help them out like whenever they once they do the funding part what's what's next how can they monitor the startup what all progress are they going through or is there any chance of fund raising who will help them out in that and again ensuring timely fund raise and merger and acquisition for exit who takes care of the exit who will take care, who will handhold them like once after the angel round is done after the like for the exit and for the mna and this is where angel network comes in so basically angel network is a full time team to curate startups and assist in business review it uses collective wisdom leveraging the network effect for evaluation there is also a team that helps in professional due diligence that is legal financial and documentation to support the ent- entire compliance and post investment support and monitoring of the portfolio so this is like a one package one stop solution that basically angel network is provided to the angel investors and uh, like uh, so lead angels again full stack advantage of like uh, so lead angels basically has consists of three uh, services one is lead advisory services that basically takes up a portfolio companies and pitches to various vcs and private equity firms and uh, it focuses its ticket size of uh, usd 1 million to 5 million then comes the lead angels network network is basically a, a core operations wherein the members across the globe and they focus on early stage seed stage investment up to usd 5000 5 lakh and uh, we are currently managing a portfolio of 45 startup investments and then then comes the la management and professional services this is basically our backbone we help in evaluation and understanding um, what startups are currently doing so it provides the legal accounting and documentation services to startup across all stages for the lead angels investment process so it's a very streamlined process which helps new angel investors to understand the entire integrity about startup investments and also handle them through the entire process so that they are not stranded in any stage or at any process so i would start with three opportunities are shortlisted um, and presented monthly after being uh, screened and curated by the investment committee based on the investors interest we do the business review and uh, everything is undertaken and uh, just to check whether everything is true and correct as said by the founders if that comes if the outcome is positive then we are followed we are like we go on to the next stage the in- investor committee are aggregated post which a term sheet is issued to the company after that the legal and financial due diligence is carried out by the agency appointed by the deal lead if cleared the investment documentation takes place and post investment we do definitely support you in the monitoring part so every quarter there is an update from the founder and uh, there's also an introspection done so what all changes is the startup going through and how's the ecosystem and overall progress about startup so that is all been taken care by us and this is the pipeline that we are currently uh, 
um, seeing into picture. So, fifteen thousand app startup applications have been screened so far by our investor analysts. Out of which twelve thousand, uh, two thousand startups were reviewed by the investment committee. The pipeline further funnels down to nine hundred and fifty startups were showcased to the to our investors. Out of which forty five went ahead with the funding. And even after those forty five, fifteen like uh, gave us a follow on fundraise or a merger and acquisition opportunity. Now startup for portfolio and diversification. So this is the mantra for all new age angel investors who. Who are actually coming into the ecosystem? How can we they like basically create a portfolio that would give them better yields and um, a safe uh, heaven? So I would say risk reduction is one of the important part and sectoral impact reduction. So I would say instead of putting all the eggs in one basket, uh, we could like uh, diversify our portfolio. Instead of putting twenty lakhs in one startup, we could put lakhs in four different startups in different sectors. So this is how like. Uh, in case of any uncertain like forecast or like if there's a pandemic in future or something, then one sector, even though it's affected, three sectors are there live and alive so that they could give you better return. Now, what are the diversification types? One is sectoral, so you can invest in various other sectors, and other is growth stage and exit timing. So you can invest in like various growth stages of a startup. And uh, our LA approach is basically we are sector agnostic, so we help give you a plethora of sectors to choose from, right from like. Our uh, D2C brands, EduTech, uh, gaming. Uh, then we would say health tech. So these are the sectors that we could give you. We could present it to you, and based on that, you can choose and do your investments on. And uh, apart from sector, we also give you a chance to like uh, invest at a range of, uh, I would say, range like throughout the lifetime lifespan of a startup. So you can invest in early stage, or you can invest in mid stage or growth stage. So you can choose um, the timing as well. And basically, this is our portfolio. So, like I mentioned, forty-five startups is what where we have invested in. These are the like the major ones. So, there's Super Daily got acquired by Swiggy. Then there is Noto Ice Cream. Basically, it's a no-calorie ice cream brand. Um, Shop Kirana is one of our like best examples, uh, which uh, give like pretty good returns. Then Planet Spark is like uh, they got their Series A by like growing five x of what we have invested in. Then the Belita got acquired by Enrich Salon. There's Go Desi, uh, amazing Imli Pop from the Bangalore brand. Um, then there's Purple Dogs, Hello Verify, and so on. So we like uh, again, like I said, so we are sector agnostic and cater a lot of sectors, which would be beneficial for our angel investors as well. And this is the team overall. Uh, so the, the the core member, Sushant Mitra, he's the founder and CEO at Lead Angels, and he was also the first external CEO at Sign, uh, which is an incubation center at IIT Bombay. He then was previously a director at Hyderabad Angels and then started Lead Angels Network. Mr. Ian Venkat is the partner at Avishkar Front Frontier, and of course we have Mr. Dhruv Nath, Professor Dhruv Nath, who was a professor at MDI Gurugram and who has also written an amazing book called as Funding Your Startups and Other Nightmares. So yeah, it's a very realistic book, and uh, like many have acclaimed, like it's a very good book, and be uh, that basic. Like the Indian example, and how can a founder could actually relate to the current scenario which is ongoing? Apart from that, uh, we have Suman Sen Gupta. He is the head for professional services. Basically, he is a chartered accountant, economic graduate, twenty years of finance, and he is the backbone at like for our evaluation and due diligences and uh, everything that uh, we need to evaluate a startup. Then, Mr. Manish Jhori, senior vice president. Uh, he has over two decades of experience working with startups and helping helping them like fundraise. He is also a happiness factor at Lead Angels and uh, make sure everything is in place and in process. So we also have Miss Truti Rani, manager at investments. Uh, she manages the western part basically. So all the investments that basically get screened is get screened through her, and she has four years of experience in investment investment banking. Then Kunal Bhale Rao, uh, he is the investment manager for the southern region. He is from I am Raipur. Then Mr. Fenil Zaveri, he is the investment banking associate. So Tanmay and Fenil basically represent lead angel, lead advisory uh, counterpart, and uh, lead advisor. They both basically takes care of like taking up mandates and pitching it to various VC networks. And yes, thank you very much for your time for listening patiently to me and also understanding a bit about angel investments and what uh, effect lead angels is trying to bring in in the ecosystem. If you have any queries, uh, please write it down on the chat box. And we'll try to get it sorted as as soon as possible. Over to you, Manish. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, 
to all of you and a warm welcome. Thanks for taking out uh, time on this Saturday, uh, a weekend typically, which is for the family members. But yes, there's a lot to learn and uh, there's a lot of new stuff happening around. Uh, broadly, uh, today, uh, our focus will be around the edtech sector. Before I delve into that, let me just introduce you, uh, Amit Agarwal, who is the founder of Occupocky. Uh, prior to so prior to prior to starting Occupy, he was the head of YouTube India, and uh, prior to that, he has done a stint at Asian Paints, and uh, before that, he was at I'm Bangalore and at Stephen. So, Amit, brief intro about yourself, if you could just take people through. Sure. Um, thanks for inviting me and uh, hosting me here. Um, you know, give me a bit of an idea about what's the typical audience like. Are we looking at people from the LA fraternity or people who are wannabe angel investors? So, so this is people who are looking at angel investing. These are uh, people who are new to the startup world. Okay. And uh, so we will cover those things say later, but uh, if you could briefly, you know, sure. talk about your background, your schooling, and then we'll come to. Sure. Uh, so, um, guys, I come from Lucknow. That's where I was born and brought up. My roots are in the villages of Western UP, uh, off the highway on, you know, um, uh, from Delhi when you venture out uh, towards whether you're going to Rishikesh or you're going towards Lucknow side. There are small towns uh, now. I mean, there are overgrown villages called Dadri, Pilakwa, et cetera. That's where my parents came from. Uh, I did all my schooling in Lucknow. Uh, city Montessori School uh, is one of the biggest schools in a city as per their records. And they had like some insane amount of like 30 plus branches tightly packed. I went to St. Stephen's to do my maths honors, went to IM Bangalore to do my MBA, passed out and started working in the corporate sector. Started with Asian Paints, uh, where I was head of Orissa. Um, I um, went to Marico after that, the makers of Sapola, um, and was managing uh, Telangana region. Uh, there was no Telangana back in the day, but those that's the region. Those are like seven, eight districts uh, back in the day. Um, then I switched over to uh, Infosys and moved to IT industry um, about 17 years back and have, have been working uh, on tech uh, since then. Uh, moved to Google where I helped set up a couple of businesses. The most uh, glorified story is the YouTube one because that one uh, got its timing magic right as well. Grew from zero to about $100 million of revenue. Um, and, and back in the day when we did that number, uh, there was uh, no other company, including Facebook, that was doing that kind of money on internet in India. Uh, so it's a very uh, interesting milestone that we had before 4G rollout, et cetera. Um, I've been in the startup world and I evangelize startups, uh, the cause of edtech, uh, been doing that uh, for the last few years. Uh, Okipok is what takes a lot of my time uh, now, uh, pretty much uh, at least 10 to 12 hours a day, at least six days a week, if not more, uh, just like any other founder. And uh, I obsess a lot about the user impact that we create uh, because English is the holy grail. Um, there are lots and lots of uh, graduates that are rolling out from engineering, non-engineering courses. And, and the moment they try to get in, an entry into the industry, uh, they, they sort of hit this wall around English. And in our vision, English is the holy grail. If we don't solve for it, uh, the reason why a lot of middle class is investing a lot of their hard-earned money for the children's educations, and education has gone expensive for, for professional degrees, uh, that doesn't that promise doesn't seem to happen. And, and that's what we enable uh, for uh, right from the very early years. Right, right. So, uh, so well, uh, we have something, so, you know, so the book that was written by Dhruv, uh, so, so Professor Dhruv Nath and Sushant Mitra, that has, in that they have actually developed a persistent model to evaluate some of the startups. I'm like, that is, actually uh, the crux of all the 
screenings that we've done so far over the past six and a half years. On the basis of that, this has been developed. Let me just share that with you. Uh, okay, is my screen visible? Yep. Well, so those are the properties that we are at across social media, where we keep on say coming out with some uh, some facts, some figures, and some learnings of across new developing sectors. Now, the persistent model that we have talked about, uh, I mean, it is there in the book for people who've not uh, got a chance to take a look at the book. It's available on Amazon. You can just check funding your startups and other nightmares. You add funding and nightmares and you will get the book. Okay. Uh, so what is persistent framework all about? Well, to begin with, P for problem. So Amit, as you said, you already mentioned, you know, English, speaking, confidence, and unemployability go hand in hand. You, if, you are, if, you're not, if you're not fluent in English, your job prospects are that much dimmer, right? So that is the problem that you began to solve. But which level did you start out at? And could you also briefly take me through your childhood? What problems did you face when you were a child? Sure. Um... There are two, three interesting aspects around this question. So my own childhood, I mean, uh, my, my parents were not uh, fortunate enough to have a great schooling. My mom never went to school at all. My, my dad had to drop out after primary school. Um, and therefore, growing in that environment where they were fighting hard for our future. Uh, see, where I come from, education is not one of the services that you buy for your children. It is the most important thing that you do for your children because... Uh, that has the passport uh, for a better future for the entire family. In fact, we say that if one child is learning from the right, then there can be something to the family. Ka kuch ho sakta hai. And, and that's the hope that, that you start with. But, but look at when rubber hits the road, right? So, so parents uh, like mine would always put the child through an English medium school. Now you go there and uh, you don't understand half the stuff. It's Greek, right, sometimes. Uh, my mom, who would accompany me to a parent-teacher meeting, uh, teachers will need to switch languages just for her uh, to be able to understand. And it takes a lot of audacity. Uh, you know, there was this good phrase by Obama called audacity of hope. Uh, that's all that you keep going on. But it's extremely hard. Um, I mean, uh, I think I, I got luckier in many ways. But uh, if I look around, all my cousins right? My chachas, bachas, my bua, my masi and all. There are very, very few people who are able to break up uh, from there and, and do professional careers, take up professional degrees. Um, and, and the reason is by the time rubber hits the road, you're like screwed on basic communication itself that goes around in a classroom. Um, what, what is unique about, uh, should I go to the solution or should I hold that because you are fitting this into a framework? Yeah, so 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 the problem was that as a child, you did not have a household wherein people spoke English. Is that correct? Yes, there was no environment that. Uh, okay. That so made... your learnings and your output in the classroom was far lower because there was no one to inform you if you had a problem. You did not have anyone to help you out with those problems. Is that correct? Sir, बच्चे क्या करते हैं ना? मैं तो घर भाग जाता था. मेरा घर पास में था. Okay. Uh, I still remember I was in the house and 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 I was in the house. I still remember that, that story and, and that's very important because I physically ran away but a lot of people mentally and psychologically they disconnect with what's supposed to happen inside a classroom which is very damaging in the early years. True. So you set out to solve this problem and because of that so you started Rocky Pocky uh, I'll straight away jump to, did you start with a learning model or you did not? You were not looking at any learning model, right? To begin with. Initially, you're looking at creating something for the masses. Correct. So the idea was to, you know, if you create enough value, uh, it's easy to figure out an earning model. And ed tech is hard. We made it harder upon ourselves by following science. Now, science makes it easy to make the impact but doesn't make it easy for an industry where you are a front runner in many ways. 
when we started, there was no preschool startup that was doing well at that time. But uh, 20 million kids being born every year sort of helps. Now, when you start working with that, the idea is that languages are best learned when a child is young, right? Uh, that's what science tells us. Uh, but, but the entire ecosystem was geared towards test prep or, you know, teenagers and above uh, sort of a demographic. So nobody was really designing for Bharat, for younger children. And, and we believe that if we could create enough value, there are thousands of ways to monetize. Data equips you a lot when you reach big data stage as a startup, which is more important in certain products, right? Rather than necessarily figuring out uh, how to have unit economics. So I used to always tell my investors in the early days as a founder that, you know, these are three possible ways that we've seen a lot of tech startups make money. We will switch to one of these, but, but this demographic is very unique. It's not been attempted before. So we need some runway where we can iterate the product to reach that delight moment. And, and, and that's what my investors backed me up for. Okay. So what could be the size of the market? Um, approximately 200 million children um, is, is roughly what we estimate to be the size. Okay. I just add to it. Um, I mean, as of, as of uh, this year, we would have more than 500 million smartphone users who come from vernacular backgrounds. Okay. Who are challenged when it comes to reading, writing, or understanding English as a language. So there is there has been a lot of hue and cry and a lot of funding that has happened around vernacular oriented companies. In fact, uh, while that is they, while that is happening, but if someone is in the job market, then English becomes very important to it. So 500 plus uh, 500 million plus smartphone users, and the there is an urban and rural divide of you know. Uh, 12% of the urban can speak English, while less than 3% of the rural population can speak English. So, and apart from that, you have the rich and the poor. So the rich, 40% plus can speak English. And in the poor, less than 2%. So there's a huge divide. What is the innovation that you try to do in this? Sure. Um, I think we'll talk about it. There are multiple aspects to this. But uh, I think uh, I also wanted to encourage the audience to start using the chat box to pop in some questions uh, to color our thinking. You're here investing your time to learn a few things. Um, I want to tailor the content to, to the kind of questions that come from there as well. Manisar will grill me one way, but I think you have your own thoughts around uh, investor choices that you guys are making. So let it pour in if that's okay with Manish, sir. Uh, put it in the chat box. You can actually put it on the chat box. We will take them separately. Alternately, if you want to raise your hand, you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, we will allow you to do that also. Yeah. Awesome. So, so coming to the innovation, what do you do? So I think uh, when you're starting from ground up, what you need to be, uh, see, we are genius at a few things, right? Every, every team that starts, starts with certain strengths. So content is a strength. We localize content. We go very, very deep and immerse ourselves into content. I'll give you a simple example. Just look at your screen. Uh, you find this whistle, which is made out of wood in my hand. Now, typically wood whistles are made for kids out of plastic, sometimes out of you know, some metal, right? Which is cheap enough. Now we've had this brand value around eco-friendly things right from day one. So this, this follows our app follows Channa Patna design language. Channa Patna toys, uh, just Google it up. Uh, it's a village that we visited many times on our way to building the app. Uh, it's near uh, on the Bangalore Mysore Highway. Uh, uh, it's it's off the place where Shole was shot. Okay, Ramnagar is the area, and uh, we would go there and we would immerse ourselves into the design language. Now, the con when content needs to speak for itself, it's not only about storytelling. It's also about differentiating as a startup, right? So we wanted to be known for our values. And, and therefore, how do we make it visible? There was a lot of investment that went into that in the first day, which is still paying off. 
So the reason why the app is 4.6, 4.7 star on Play Store, despite 3 million downloads, is because we told the content story really, really well. Second is we built up this whole character around Okie Pokie. Now, when you're dealing with children, you can go with the story and the message, and that's fine. I mean, Jack and Jill doesn't change whether told uh, by a mom or by a teacher. But Jack and Jill does change when told by a friend. So, so we had to be very clear about the character IP that we were developing. So, so we had to invest in a song and it came from, you know, Bollywood level singers. Uh, my best friends, Oki Poki, ooh, Oki Poki. And the idea was to design that experience. Uh, so, so that once the connection is made, then how do you stay? People ask me all the time, what's your magic behind the retention that you have? So we've got some of the most amazing retention metrics um, that we have seen and we are extremely proud of it. Uh, when I launched an app, people told me that on day one, retention typically drops to single digits. If you're a great app, then if on day 30, you're at 10% and above, it's fantastic. You've done a good job. And today we've reached a point where even on day 180, we are way more than 10%. We are almost 15%, right? And that happens because you built the whole journey of a user. So, so the innovation around that. So that's one thing around content design layer of the product. The third layer, which is very hard, right, was the algorithms or the AI aspect of our uh, tech, right? Now, kids can be very finicky. They might be into uh, cars one day, and they might play with cars all day, every day for the next week. And suddenly, one day, they'll pop out, and they say, okay, I don't want to play with cars. Give me something else. Now, how do you deal with those mood swings that happen a lot to a child? And, and the influences are so many. It could be the other media that they're consuming. It could be their friend, somebody in the family, and, and, and they swing. So our algorithms had to really struggle in the early days to predict what will a child like today. And, and we had to study, do time studies, uh, at what time of the day, content type, age group, language, region, so many variables that got into getting the heuristics right in the early days. Um, the, the other aspect around tech was the speech tech. So, bache totla bolte, unko horse ko halls bolna hota hai. Now, halls is like a medicine, uh, lozenges hote hai. Halls is like a physical structure, halls. But wo to ghode ki baat kar hai, halls. How do you make that out? And that's a very big challenge. Uh, we, we haven't completely solved for, uh, you know, lisping children. But, but that's where the opportunities Right, as we build big data and data sets around speech tech, uh, we're promising an impeccable experience to a child's learning trajectory. So these are some of the aspects that you go, um, and uh, uh, we can go on and on, but I want to move on to the next question as well. So we are looking at scalability. Uh, I mean, so what are your monthly average users and the total download that you already had is around 3 million, right? Yes, so we had about 3 million downloads around 240K monthly active users. Um, growing very, very strong uh, currently also because there's a momentum because of COVID. So we did not have 4G when I was ideating the startup, we did not have COVID, but there are facilitators that come along to help you scale. But you also need to design product inherently for scale. So a lot of things were algorithmic, cloud-led, because we did not have the capacity to set up our own service back in the time. Um, and unfortunately, uh, we've been blessed with Microsoft Azure partnership, earlier Google partnership, to help us scale on their cloud systems. So, so right from tech, right from your processes, your marketing, uh, very, very frugal marketing is what you've done. Uh, again, another thing that we are very proud of is uh, scalability also comes from the fact that in the early days, you won't have a lot of money uh, to grow your top of the funnel. So how do you get good at it? And necessity is the mother of invention. So we got very good at frugal acquisition and retention. Uh, we thought it was a very smart choice because let's say somebody who's retaining only 10% users on day 30, which is not bad for a free app experience versus somebody who's retaining more than 30%, let's say, right? So they can afford to be you know, uh, acquiring users even at you know, three times the pace uh, by using the same money. So that's what works. Uh, team building is where we had like so many early challenges uh, and, and this is something that you will face as investors. So I had a couple of co-founders uh, and then you go long with your startups, right? There will be nightmare moments like the slide is saying. So, so uh, somebody had a health issue, 
somewhere there was a compatibility issue and, and we sort of fell apart, but you cannot slow down, right? Um, I like the word persistent here because I'm a very persistent guy and uh, you got to build that. The other part is uh, you have to I was just having a dialogue with the team. There was an issue that got escalated to me between customer success and sales. And I was like, fine. And, uh, uh, you know, this happened, but how are you learning from this? And we had a whole career development discussion for 20 minutes besides just solving the issue, which could have taken only five minutes. So, so how are you growing and evolving that team, which is why people will stay long with you. We are so proud to share that, you know, my core product team, whether engineering or product, in an industry where attrition is so high, have chosen to stay with us uh, since the inception of the product. Um, I'll, I'll quickly cover the other three. Entry barriers also create your opportunities. So uh, how can you build IP around entry barriers? So I spoke about speech tech, a very scalable model of frugal content uh, experience, as well as go-to-market strategy. Uh, if a founder doesn't have a few around it, I usually very, I usually worry if I'm the one who's investing. Uh, and is the niche going to be big enough? Uh, are we small enough to be in a niche? And is the niche itself big enough? Uh, those are the two questions that I would ask. Uh, so preschool was a niche because EdTech itself was very small. Uh, there was no Baiju's on the radar, or possibly Baiju's was the only big brand on the radar. There was nobody else that people were talking about when we started with our first pitch, right? And, and as angels, you would be evaluating founders at that stage. Um, so, so you need to believe in their niche. And, and the numbers supported us because 20 million kids being born, let's say around eight to 10 million out of them come into the formal system already. So that creates a, like a huge space for us. Nobody else was talking vernacular in edtech at that time. So again, it created a space for us that could scale across languages. Um, and yeah, I mean, traction, you measure your report back. We've already discussed around retention, engagement numbers, um, uh, and uh, uh, how, how, how big the number already is. What's the trend line, whether they're growing in the right way and all. Right. So, uh, and, and so, uh, so if you see traction, it is also not only has he been able to get two and a half lakh users month on month and increasing, but he's able to monetize a lot of this traffic by providing them classes. And one of the modes, I think, which he has not exactly been able to bring out was that if a person is from a Punjabi family, then he can actually talk to the app in Punjabi language. If he's a Telugu, he can talk in Telugu language and, and find out that that gray large animal with big ears and a long snout is actually called an elephant. Which the kid may say, you know, hey, ye elephant hai. as he was saying, the lisping problem that is there. So, uh, so good. While we have covered this, now a lot of startups are there, uh, to, like having covered the persistent model. Now, EdTech uh, continues to be a huge opportunity. No doubt that we have Baiju, which is a which is a Decacon valued at the most valued Indian startup at sixteen and a half billion dollars. So, and yet more and more startups are coming. What are the other white spaces or what, how do you see this market panning out? And what has the pandemic helped uh, people in this kind of a situation? How has the pandemic helped the sector largely? Sure. Uh, good questions, I think, uh, both. One is, uh, EdTech is so fundamentally broken offline, right? Um, there is a reason why quality is not there when it comes to either curriculum innovation or the teaching talent. And that creates a huge gap across subjects. You go to sciences, there's a problem. You go to maths, there's a problem. And we are in languages, there's a problem. You go to test prep and there's a problem. And all of that requires to be solved. Now, given the economy we are, and anybody who's trying to scale a solution to scale to a middle-class price point means you can best do it with digital intervention. So, so the vision is very simple. You know, you solve just for QMath, uh, sort of a problem for early years. There's a whole unicorn to be made, right? Um, I, I made a talk uh, some time back and I spoke about how there's a scope for 25 unicorns just in EdTech in India. There's a huge hungry market 
right? I go back to my statement that parents are hungry. This is not a service that they buy. This is the service that they buy for their child, right? Now, um, the other part was, uh, sorry, I, I somehow lost the track of thought in the second question. So one was where the opportunities are, how do you see it growing? Yeah, and how many more say unicorn do you expect out of this? Oh, okay, yeah. so I answered both. <laughs> there are a lot of startups who will, uh, who will, uh, so, so we already have four or five say, contenders, right? We've got, uh, so I mean, actually we can say there were two different unicorns earlier, but now they've combined into one, that is Akash got at a billion dollars by, uh, uh, say, Baijus. Then we've got, uh, um, so then of course we've got, uh, we have an academy, we've got Vedantu, which is a unicorn, you can say. Not yet a unicorn, right? Not yet, but QMath is growing. They're, they're doing, they've just announced right. a big round. Uh, right. right. And, uh, and one more of our portfolio company could be counted as a unicorn. Uh, sorry, it is, it is, it has uh, been, uh, our lead advisory team had gotten it funded by Secure. This is Doubtnut, which is doing very phenomenally well. Again, like uh, uh, like NetTech, they were initially free. And uh, they looked at monetization once they reached the critical mass. So EdTech for all, uh, it is it requires, uh, you, need, you need that, a very large community around it to actually get it to the monetization stage. And I think Amit has been able to do that. When we invested into him, he did not have, he did not have any monetization so far. Maybe a, a few experiments here and there. But uh, last year onward, he had started with experimenting on live classes based on uh, uh, the, the customers coming in through the app or through the website. And uh, that has that has worked. Uh, we are uh, we are doing. We've already trained hundreds of people, and he's added some like Rubik's cube and creative classes also because creativity brings uh, engagement, confidence, and far more. Uh, so the child is far more able to you know grasp what he's talking about. Uh, now, apart from that, what do you think are the challenges for? It take and uh, what is it that is currently missing? Because we've got bandwidth, we've got smartphones in the rural areas with the poor. My maid, her kids, uh, they do all their uh, homework, everything on their smartphone. Okay. Yeah. So I think the challenge is in creating a content model that uh, creates an instant result because parents are frustrated with whatever offline they have. And that's why they're coming to you, right? And, and if you don't perform, there's a problem. The other part is, can you keep your CAC low? Uh, and uh, if your CAC is not low enough, we are sort of uh, one of the best in class, I'm told, by, by whatever benchmark that we ran into uh, for other companies at similar stage, higher stage. Um, and uh, that matters a lot because when you go out to create a quality experience for a pocket friendly price, uh, the unit economics are decided by your CAC in many ways, especially in the early days uh, when you're building the early revenue. So those are the things that I would call out. Okay. Uh, I think let's move over to the audience. Anil, would you like to ask either me or Amit what you're looking at? So by the way, uh, so like Occupy is already a portfolio company at uh, Lead Engines. And uh, uh, I mean, they have been able to, to, so they continue to work with uh, children, even in the hinterlands. Where was that girl, Jhar, Jhar Sukhra in, in what? Odisha. Chati, Odisha. Where was okay, no apologies. Actually, I have come in very, very recently onto the Lead Angels uh, platform. So I don't really have much of a background of Occupy. Accepting uh, what I can just pick up from the, you know, uh, from the answers that you provided to the, uh, to the questions that uh, Manish listed out. True. So, so, so it started out as an app wherein, you know, a child can understand, uh, child can actually talk to the app. So there's a lot of speech, uh, 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 well, yeah, speech element involved in it. 
and and in his in his own language like it could be telugu marathi hindi now when he started to do the live classes he tried to map it in a similar manner that if if a child is from a bengali family he will ensure that that teacher understands bengali because the kid will ask his problem in in bengali right wo angrezi mein nahi puchega hindi mein nahi puchega Uh, his uh, his machine learning piece, uh, not only in the app but also for the live classes mapping. Is this only that uh, sh you should be mapping someone who understands the native language of that child? That is one of the key modes that he has been able to uh, to say to say create around the thing. Okay, understood. Does that answer your question? well to to some extent because obviously i mean i, I don't have the uh, i don't have an understanding of the we'll share the deck with you we'll share the deck with you what is exactly. happening exactly I, i think it would really help to to um, you know look at the pitch deck get an overall understanding of uh, of the of the company itself and then right. the right questions could um, could be addressed right right okay uh, so so just for uh, for the audience at large um maintaining such an app requires a lot of cloud resources i mean we have been we were uh, he was he was using google cloud uh, so resources earlier which uh, were there for him and uh, very recently he got 100000 plus dollar credits for azure also because it is very power hungry you need lots of uh, uh bandwidth compute power and all those things because there's a lot of speech to text and text to speech and nlp and nlu kind of thing which is going in the background so uh so the tech resources or the resources required for technology platform are pretty high uh, that's why the burns burn can be pretty high initially but once you have that kind of target uh, audience of yours at scale then that starts working for you which is what is happening with many of these other players in this company uh, uh so on your chat window there is a feedback form that has been uh, put by adil uh, happy to get your feedback on that anyone else would like to ask some questions tushar sakshi uh, saif any one of you hi everyone i am sakshi desai uh, i have started a startup called cook c o q it's basically a food tech platform wherein we are trying to solve the problem of khane mein kya banana hai and we are also working on the creators economy wherein mm -hmm. we are getting these instagram micro influencer share their recipes with us oh, so okay. i uh, we are actually looking for but for a angel investment so i wanted to check the approach for that reach out to us on linkedin uh you can you can actually so fill out the form a network team could could get in touch with you provided you have the revenue or the or the traction which is growing month on month okay. uh happy to have a look at it sure. and we are not there if you if you feel that may be required we could possibly help you with uh, with say, one of our member uh, investor members who could who could get you reach to a stage wherein you know you become an attractive uh, startup for investors to put the money that will be helpful and also wanted to check uh, when you say there has to be revenue uh, are you saying you don't invest in pre revenue startups yes i mean amit was the only exception uh, amit was one of the exception at least in the last 5 years before that we did a lot of pre revenue companies and uh, the gist of it was in the funding your startup and other nightmares so those nightmares have been because those are pre revenue companies got it and, sure uh, cuz the idea is good see essentially as a make we will come in at a time when you know you are you got your customers who are using your services and they're ready to pay for that service or that monetizable like in amit's case although he was not taking uh, say revenue but they were from 6 thousand so he was he was connected with me for nearly a year okay 
uh, or or at least ten months. Uh, and trust me, from ninety thousand, he he had grown to two lakh plus users within the span of those five uh, uh, within the span of those say, six seven months. So there's a month on month increase now. An investor would only get his exit if you are having hyper growth. Hyper growth means that month on month you need to have double digit growths. So, if you have got users who are growing in that space, maybe a smaller revenue is fine with that. But okay. sure. see, the revenue is a validation that is someone ready to pay for your service or not. Got it. Right. But then, but then again, the revenue is not there on the app. Just to tell you, like we have started offline diet market. So, so. to the point, if you have questions on edtech sector, you, uh, I mean, we can, uh, you can catch me on LinkedIn. Sure. My simple LinkedIn dot com slash in slash jewelry. That will be helpful. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. If you have any questions on the edtech sector or anything else, or on or on what lead angel does, what angel investing is about, uh, could you share more about creating content specifically for your target audience and the challenges associated with it? I mean, that is for you. Sure, Gitanj, thanks for popping that up. Um, it's a very important question when you're designing for vernacular. The reason is your content cost multiplies. Uh, so you've got to have a content strategy that scales. And with each language, you're not doubling up the whole costs. So uh, I'll give you an example of uh, the interactive experience that we have on the app uh, to explain the context. Let's say we are teaching the word apple, right? We show a picture, right? And we ask the child, what fruit is this? Can you say apple? And the child will say apple and the apple will say, whether they got it right or not. Similarly, for a Hindi speaking child, we would do that. Kya aap is fal ka naam bata sakte ho? Kya aapko apple bolna aata, apple bol ke dikha Right? And, and the child will say, and, and then you give feedback back. So, so we have to work hard on a very scalable model where the voice assets that are being used, we use only human voice assets. And we use top of the class. So you better uh, not duplicate efforts across languages wherever you need it. So the apple was the same pronunciation across languages because that was the word being taught to the child. So one is get that content model in place uh, of, of all the content assets. So, so our app has arguably almost a million assets that has gone into designing this experience. Um, and then you need to have a pipeline at the back end. How will you pull out voice assets of high quality at scale? So you've got to invest a lot in the team that's going to back you up as a steady voice. Uh, because we are a character driven sort of an experience, we did not want too many voices inside the app. Uh, and then which is why uh, so far we've, I think used only about two, three voices across languages. Uh, so, so multilingual talent is, is needs to be found. People who can do more than one language for you. Uh, and, and that was useful to us. Uh, so so it, it goes down to those layers of detail of a brutal execution. Um, and end of the day, you know, founders are out with a hard negotiation bowl. So uh, not everybody likes you, but you've got to figure out a way to work with high quality talents, tell them the vision uh, that we're going to grow big one day and therefore you want to be a part of this. And, and you've identified the right kind of people who agree with that. Pitch. Is that okay? Do you want me to go in more detail, sir? No, I think, I think, I think this is good. Uh, uh, so, so the fun I fact is uh, the same voice talent that does voice for Chuta Beam, for Hollywood artists in the Hollywood dub films. They do the voiceovers for Oki Poki. And okay. uh, yeah, so we get that level of quality uh, despite just being at a very early stage uh, with, with very limited budgets. Okay. So Anil is asking, what is the likely scenario? Okay, let's do some of crystal gazing. Okay, what is the likely scenario to emerge in five to ten years? Will edtech companies complement or compete with conventional this thing? So, uh, can I take a hit on this one? Uh, so, Anil, it is not far fetched to think of, and Amit, you can you can uh, you know uh, rebuttal on what I say. It is not too far fetched to think of 
of that there is one huge tower, one huge tower with probably 50 floors, 100 floors, each floor uh, taking up, you know, each floor having 10 different schools. And that whole tower is owned by a Baiju or part of it is owned by an academy or something like that. And schools, as we know today, may not exist. They would become experiential centers. That is quite a bit of possibility, at least on the pedagogy and the learning side. Okay. Was acquired for only $1 billion by a company that was probably started around 2013-14. So Baiju's, when I had, when I had uh, gone to Bangalore, Baiju's was, was a course to record with, but it had just been, I think, a couple of years that time. And they were not even thinking about any tech strategy or anything of that sort. But in, in seven years' time, uh, what, where they have reached from 2014 onward to now is huge because uh, a guy who would not even have been earning probably uh, a crore in 2012-13 is now valued at $16.5 billion, which is huge. And that could be the way to go because you have all the efficiencies that are going in. Amit, your thoughts on that? Sure. Um, I think uh, at tech sector, when I look at that word, I, I think of ERPs, which are enabling schools and colleges to manage parent-teacher communication, assignment flow, online classes in the post-COVID era uh, really, really well. Uh, I think Lead Angels have invested in Ingenium, which is in the Class Plus sort of a space. Uh, Class Plus itself is raising like 100 million round now uh, or 100 million valuation, something like that. I, I don't have all the numbers at that stage of funding. Um, Similarly, uh, language learning, where we are at, uh, there have been companies that have traditionally targeted a much higher demographic without bothering about science like us. They said, you know, there's a need for somebody to appear for an interview today. I'll go and train them, right? But languages across is a very wide space as people migrate uh, to other geographies to get educated. Uh, university or career tech, uh, you know, people applying to universities is a big space, which is seeing a lot of innovation. Uh, using technologies uh, to, to, to bridge the information barriers uh, for somebody who's sitting in uh, a small town in, let's say, a high, you know, um, Andhra Pradesh and trying to apply to uh, a German university, for example. Um, uh, similarly, there are pedagogical innovations which are happening at scale. Uh, things that happen offline, how do we do at scale by bringing them online? Uh, whether it's the JE prep, whether it's uh, pedagogical innovation done by language learning for me, uh, for QMath, it's for maths related, uh, those the pedagogical innovation. Now, all of these are huge opportunities. Now, slice it by language, slice it by age, slice it by subject. So those are three variables around which you can create a huge value. India is so big that you're doing something really innovative for Telugu students on maths, you have a unicorn potential over there. Uh, so that's where I think uh, will happen. Um, also, just to understand the way a typical parent psyche work, the current education system that we work. Nobody's going to say no to boards, right? So you have to coexist with the offline solutions, which is the second part of your question, sir. Right? So, so if you figure out a way which is synergistic to these guys, uh, you have a far more scalable model than not. Uh, having said that, you can be a rebel, like by you with Anthony, like. Your school is not doing enough. We are there for you. And that also works. Uh, you just got to figure out scale differently instead of alliances. You'll figure out. But end of the day, my parent will look at me. Is my child's marks going up in English? Is my child's confidence going up in English? Are they able to compete in English? Et cetera. So those are the vanity, real measures. That's when rubber hits the road. Um, so yeah, it will be a combination of these. Uh, when I say the number 25 unicorns, so imagine like fast forward crystal ball gazing is what Mani sir said, but unicorn hai, kam se kam 50 unicorns laga lo. So we're talking about like almost a hundred company ecosystem over here uh, that is getting created. And uh, the timing has never been more right because of COVID schools ban pade. Parents frustrated on dare bat. Just, you know, a month and a half back, it was all massacre happening all over my social groups in the newspaper media about the amount of casualties due to COVID. 
so parents are not that comfortable sending kids to school even like college kids right forget school kids that we deal with um, and and that creates a huge opportunity and acceleration moment the tipping point aaya tha covid wave 1 mein last year and covid wave 2 ke baad wo bahut real ho gaya so they were in marketing jargon we learned about late adopters to a technology to wo late adopters hamesha bada number hota hai compared to early adopters ab wo sare aa rahe hain and it's far easy to sell why am i saying i can boast of a good cat cost of acquisition because log bhar ke aa hi rahe hain you just create a good offering and you go scale so anil uh, sorry uh, i mean the anil one more thing that we could look at is the way we have chains of you know um dunkin donuts or uh, uh, your mcdonalds or burger kings and in the years when era we used to have merulas now we have only merulas ice cream in delhi uh, but we could have you know schools which would which will become franchises of say it could be it could be an academy it could be byjus it could be white hat junior it could be okay pokey for that matter you know you could have kid school which would be i mean why not why don't we oh, we can aspire for that also so so that kind of a scenario could also be happening i guess uh, any uh, i hope that answers your question anil yes absolutely to quite an extent there, there's only one question that comes out of the uh, you know out of this discussion sure. is that um, effectively i mean you know based on the kind of um, action that we are seeing in this space now and 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 the sharp growth that we are Envisaging in the in the near in the near future, oh. schooling actually become a uh, a tangible alternative for many parents because there would be so many options. Maybe some many parents might choose that uh, you know these conventional education which are uh, institution which are either getting too expensive or too too bothersome in terms of sending uh, sending their kids uh, either because of pandemic or otherwise. Maybe it's it's just easier for me to get my child to stay back at home. study everything until year 10 year 12 appear for board exams from home and then get to university or maybe you know do do his masters course as well as some uh, sometime in the future is that very a true. Very true. that that is also a possibility in fact uh, people from social capital uh, people like chamath uh, and all they are uh, big time hobbyists of home schooling uh, the moment the pandemic started i could see that tweet you know that hey is there a person who can come for homes home schooling i mean is there a person uh, we are looking only at home schooling we are not planning to send our kids so people who got the resources they are in no two ways opting for this or have, or have opted for this what is happening now is that with the power with the power that is there in these phones i mean my phone has got more uh, say compute power than my laptop okay in such a situation what you will have is the kind of content and and with the advent of ar vr uh, also it will be more of you know you don't need to be you are going to a school only for that element cannot be provided by these online thing and so probably augmented reality or virtual reality could still provide that uh, but home schooling is a lot of people have gone to say that kind of thing and uh, schools are like simply i mean schools are not even spending any money on ac or anything now except for a few rooms there where the classes uh, so where the classrooms are happening but of course uh, we are expecting from 15 july onwards all the schools to open let's see how it comes and the third wave is fingers crossed hope it is not there and if it's there it's far controlled but uh, Uh, this online education is here to stay. No two ways about that. I think otherwise uh, we wouldn't be having uh, so many unicorns in the online education space. Uh, there are, in fact, only English learning apps which are unicorns in China. In India too, that can be a very much a reality. That's what we are hoping for from our investment in Occupy. Okay. okay. Thanks so much. Okay. So I think we are good to go. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you, everyone, for your time. And Amit, thanks for taking our time from your busy founder's schedule, as they say. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, any last pieces of words?
uh, on the lead angels? And uh, would you advise anyone to come to lead angels? Okay. Sure. So I think a couple of things I can see there are entrepreneurs here like Sakshi, there are investors here like Anil sir. Um, largely, I would say Lead Angels is one of the most special communities that I've had a privilege of interacting with. Um, and uh, I say it because I've, I've seen enough. Um, I've at least been uh, talking to or know people across a dozen odd angel forums. Uh, each one of them is unique in their own way. Uh, but for me personally, what I've seen is the most exclusive club that you have in India at the moment. have uh, to take a startup from a level one to level 10. Um, I've not seen it anywhere else. I think we've been supported a lot by, let's say, our ventures uh, succeed. I've pitched to Mumbai Angels, uh, IAN, Hyderabad Angels in the past. I'm, I'm not calling out names on anybody, but I'm saying uh, I've not come across somebody um, uh, that, that is as unique or as powerful uh, a system as lead angels. Uh, they're not perfect. Um, so, so don't take it to the other extreme, but I'm talking about effectiveness and not perfection. Um, I look at their model, I compare it with others. Um, and uh, I think uh, as, as a founder, I, I would always recommend if you want highest quality angels to support you, back you up. This is the forum. As an investor, uh, I've seen uh, our investors on the cap table uh, at Lead Angels being supported and talked to and spoken to the level of due diligence that they do on your behalf. Uh, it's it's uh, 10x to, to what I've experienced in the past for either me or my small portfolio of companies that I work with. So uh, we are in a very exclusive range and uh, I, I hope you guys encash it, whether you're a founder like Sakshi or uh, an investor like Anil sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amit. Thanks, Anil. Thanks, Manuji, Saif, Sakshi. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Gitanj. And uh, uh, good to have you over. Look forward to having you in our other workshop and look, for, look forward to having you join us either as a portfolio or as an investor member. Uh, do stay in touch. Uh, you can always reach out to me. You can check out Manish Jory Lead Angels, LinkedIn. If you have to reach out on phone, I can just write that down. For you, if you want to do that, please send in a message on WhatsApp and we'll fix up a time to speak.